Hey guys, this is Denny. And this is James from TDB. Um, today we are bringing you a ripe puer uh, for episode 62. So, uh, previous two episodes, we showed you guys a couple of the different raw puers from White TT. And they have a lot of good ripe puers as well, so uh, we decided to bring one on. So, this is kind of like a, a, an affordable, uh, not super premium ripe puer, but it's definitely not as cheap as you can get. Definitely. So, there's a good 12 years on this one. Yep. Um, James, do you want to speak a little bit more to this while I prep the tea here? Yep. Um, so you guys can watch while Denny breaks this up just so we can get a little bit more oomph in the uh, early brews. But the tea we're brewing is 2002 CNNP uh, 7572 Tia So that's a lot of different stuff. So 2002, year it's from, uh, obvious. So CNNP is uh, factory number one. But what's confusing about that is that what they basically did is they allowed other companies to take their brand, kind of like a franchise um, to some extent. White label it. And so that means that people, other tea companies, could literally pay to basically use the CNNP brand. And so tea pie means pasted label, which means that this was not uh, done by CNNP, the, the factory itself. It was done by someone that paid um, to use their brand. And so as you can imagine, uh, allowing other companies, however good or bad, to use your label uh, kind of ruined the reputation of this company. So as a result, you can find some of the better bargains by, uh, by looking for kind of like teas from uh, tea pies or, or, or people that pasted the label on Very it. interesting. It's a business. It is a business. They tried to be McDonald's, but... They ended up just having a shitty reputation. I guess McDonald's might have a shitty reputation, <laughs> depending on who you talk to. But. Mm. And so this tea um, has a little bit more age than your average ripe pour. So that means that early on, for the first couple steeps, it will tell us more about just kind of like how this tea was stored. Um, and then as we continue to steep it out, it should be able to go a little bit longer than your average ripe pour. Uh, we'll learn a little bit more just about the base tea quality. So, two super quick rinses. You can see the color on this is already just beautiful. Beautiful. Um, and it's going to be a very deep color next time. So, I'll just get these. And so, um, you drink a lot of ripe pu'er, Denny, right. so kind of what's your standard procedure? Do you use clay? Do you use gaiwans? Yeah, I, I use clay. Um, frankly, it's, it's largely convenience, and it's also that the tea itself can take it and enjoys it. Um, get in there. It's so hot. So, um, I, I find that, you know, I like a very intense uh, ripe pu'er, um, and I think that Ripe puer can be overdone without much harm. Look at how beautiful that is. Look at how syrupy the the liquid is too. Oof. So, so when you say overdone without much harm, what what exactly do you So mean? if I were to brew this first go after two rinses for fifteen seconds, this would be basically black. Um but it would still taste really good. It wouldn't be as good as a flash brew and sort of doing it properly, but the wiggle room is significantly more for ripe versus raw. So it's more forgiving. Most definitely. It's like a roast to do long in that way. Um, and so, That's a good comparison. So um, I end up drinking raw, uh, ripe pu'er, excuse me, very casually. Um, and as a result, I'll be hanging out and, you know, reading a book and I oversteep something a little bit and it's no big deal. Um, so, uh, yeah, in terms of brewing parameters and teaware and stuff, use anything that you want, really. It's not, um, it's not that important, but clay tends to work really well, so let's yeah. go for it. Cool. Cheers. Cheers. Really balanced. Mm-hmm. Very smooth. Yeah. Sweet. Very smooth, very sweet. Sweet, sweet all around. Already um, uh, nice and viscous and thick. Um, I like the mouthfeel a lot on this. Yeah, really well balanced, a little bit sweet, a little bit woody, you know, 
this this uh, ripe and the last raw that we had both seem so characteristic characteristically their category of tea. Yep. So this tastes just like what I would describe a normal ripe pu'er to taste like in a great way. Yeah, and I would say both this tea and the two thousand and seven repave are significantly above average as well. Mm. This is sinful. I would never do this in um, a normal session, but we're going to toss the rest of this and get a second steeping going just to compare them. So when you're drinking this at home, take your time and enjoy it. Also, uh, because we're steeping so quickly back to back, this is going to get real hot. And um, so one, be careful, and two, it will influence slightly influence the, the brewing parameters. So if we were to drink this more slowly in a far more casual environment, than uh, a tea podcast, it might be a little bit of a um, less than 10 second brew, and you might have a little bit longer yep. to brew these. And you'll see how dark that color yeah. that we're getting is. Yeah, beautiful viscosity, nice and syrupy, yep. that kind of deep cherry color. What tends to be your um, favorite brews for red pure? How so? So, you know, uh, I mean, like, obviously this is darker than... Right to where it kind of gets dark, and then it gets light again. Right. And, you know, we were talking okay. with uh, Glenn and Lamu uh, over at Crimson Lotus, yeah. and they were saying that Lamu prefers kind of the later steeps when it loses a bit of its potency, kind of becomes uh, just sweet and more simplistic. Good question. Opinion. Yeah. So, you know, I like the beginning ones because... It, Often I'll drink ripe early in the day because my stomach can tolerate it. So I'll have a very light breakfast and then I'll have some ripe pu'er. Um, and as a result of that, it's this bold flavor. And so I almost associate kind of that like waking me up caffeine experience with it. Um, but in terms of taste, I think the middle ones are the best because you have that nice balance. It's not your palate has gotten used to the flavors, um, but you're still sort of enjoying the um, evolution of the of the actual taste itself. So. Really nice. This is really yeah. nice. Yeah, very, very, very sweet. Um, very balanced. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and actually, um, I'm not getting a lot of the um, je ne sais quoi elements that I always describe as not knowing how to describe um, from this. So it's interesting. I don't. I'm not tasting the age on this as much, and that's partly because it's ripe um, and it's aged quickly. And the aging process won't affect it as much as a raw pu'er. Well, it will really will change a lot over time. Yep. Um, but um, yeah, it's really. I think that the only thing that I'm noticing about the age of this is just that the balance is wonderful. Yep. Really, it's you know, it's like why you would age a wine because um, as age as the aging process happens, the intensity of certain flavors diminishes and complements um, subtler flavor, flavors. So um, I'm really enjoying this. Yep. And for instance, like, this is 12 years, so you cannot at all have that kind of like pile, mm -hmm. pondy, stinky taste that that you would get uh, if this were fresh off the presses. Definitely. Um, and, uh, yeah, it just feels like a, a complete ready-to-drink sort of beverage right now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this, again, is kind of more in the sort of dead center of a, of a ripe pu'er for me. So I, know, I, don't necessar I wouldn't necessarily introduce someone to ripe pu'er with this. Um, again, I think it's easier to introduce folks to flavors that they already like that taste like other stuff. Like, I've had a lot of red pours that are very vanilla, cherry sweet. Yep. And for people that are just starting out with tea, that can be really enjoyable and kind of an interesting conduit to in to get into these different, more robust, I would say, more traditional flavors. Yeah, rather than so introducing them to something that's very, very just kind of like straightforward. It's like here's your flavors, here's where here's where it's at. Um, just because they wouldn't be able to necessarily appreciate um, the full balance of this, just because they have no kind of like benchmark for totally. what ripe pu'er should be. Totally. So to make sure we don't run out of time, James, if someone wanted to learn more about where to get this tea and learn more about ripe pu'er and raw pu'er and. What yeah, do? so they should come to uh, tdb.org uh, to just learn more about tea. Uh, lots of good blog posts, uh, articles, episodes, all of that sort of thing. Also, please hit that subscribe button on our YouTube channel, I think. Um, also, go check out uh, Paul over at White Tea Day.
T and T blog, two dog T blog. Yes, mm. two dog T blog. Yeah, so he has uh, two different sites. Uh, White TT is kind of like where he sells his tea. He also has a blog there, and two dog is where he uh, actually blogs more about just tea, generally speaking. So. Very good. Well, and, and thank you everybody for tuning in. Um, check us out next time, um, and uh, enjoy your tea drinking. Yeah. Cheers. See cheers. you guys soon.